Hi, this is Sarah with Ruffles and Rain Boots, and today we're going to make watercolor painted feathers. You don't need many supplies. You're just going to choose whichever watercolors. My favorite are the Dr. P.H. Martin Hydras. And the most important thing I would say is to get this water brush. Um, they're very, very cheap. You can get them from a couple brands. So first we're going to take any brush and brush out the feather and we're just going to start painting. I like to use really bold, bright hues and really saturated hues as well. So this is a Diox Purple, uh, the Cotman line, and it's very, very bright because what's going to happen is on some of these, they're actually going, some of the colors are actually going to bleed uh, into to more muted tones. Like this green is a gorgeous green, it's emerald. Um, but the PH Martin, those are the ones that really stay vibrant. Um, you'll see at the end, and in one of the projects I use these uh, watercolored feathers on, these pinks uh, and the Diox Purple are probably the two of the brightest uh, hues you'll get. Okay, so you paint the entire thing. Um, separate the colors you know are going to run. So like these two, the, uh, the blue and the pink, obviously we're going to make purple. So just paint the bottom and then the very last bit, then start combining the pink and the purple. It makes for a fun experiment with kids too. My daughter made quite a few and we had a lot of fun with color theory and with color um, combinations. So once you're done painting the entire feather, you're going to very carefully flip it over. So you just pick it up and underneath, now I'm working on an acrylic piece here. Um, it's plexiglass, I mean. So you, if you're working on a plastic bag even or whatever, you're going to have some of the water stay in place. So you're going to flip it and try and put it back down in the colors. Otherwise, you're going to get a lot of color combinations you may not want. So you just paint the other side quickly. You're going to have most of it done. So you're just looking for anything that's glaring white. And then you're going to set that off on a paper towel to dry. We're going to clean up our workspace and then I'm going to brush one that was already painted. So as you can see here, it looks, ooh, it looks nasty, doesn't it? It's mottled. <laughs> so what we're going to do is we're just going to separate all of the strands. I'm working on the back first. I find that it just seems to work better. Um, and the little bits at the bottom here are going to get a little tricky to work with, especially if you have one of those huge, you know, down kind of huge fluffy bits at the bottom. But you're just going to quickly brush it out. This doesn't take very long. I'm going to speed this up so that it's not boring. <laughs> but you're just going to lightly brush. Don't worry if you have some color transfer onto your brush, which is why I'm wearing gloves. We actually had some plans uh, this day, so I wanted to uh, just wear gloves so I didn't have to scrub everything on my nails. But you're going to flip it over and you're going to brush the other side. And you see how fluffy it gets? It gets very, very fluffy. Now this part at the top is kind of like the part at the bottom. It's going to color a little differently and it's not as fluffy, but I love them. So here you can see the bright pink and purple and here it's used on a very large dream catcher I made for my daughter. Thanks for joining us with Ruffles and Rain Boots. Be sure to like and subscribe.